as you know, face the judge and raise your right hand. Do you swear firm under penalty of law that the testimony you'll give in this case will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Okay, have a seat. Talk into the mic. Thank you. Sir, please state your name for the record. Jason Hawks. How are you currently employed? Uh, I own a company that analyzes device extractions and cell phone records for attorneys. Lucky you. Uh, Mr. Hawks, can you give uh, the ladies and gentlemen of the jury some information about your uh, background and training? Uh, certainly, Sue. So I started in law enforcement in 2005 with the Alameda County Sheriff's Office. I remained there until 2017 with the last about seven years being assigned to investigations. Uh, after leaving the Sheriff's Office, I went to the District Attorney's Office where I was an investigator for the DA. Um, I was there for three years and then I started this company. Uh, specific to device extractions, I've attended classes from Cellbrite, which is a company that extracts information from a handset. I've, uh, I'm a certified operator, certified physical analyst, and I've recently taken the um, advanced smartphone analysis. How did you become involved in this case? I was contacted by the prosecutor's office, I believe it was about a year ago, in March, late March, I believe, 23. And were you asked to perform any work? I was. And let me back up for a second. Um, have you been, I apologize. Have you been qualified as an expert witness in cell, in cell phone records and device analysis? I have. And how many times have you been qualified as an expert in those areas? Uh, between records from the carrier and records from the handset, I've been qualified 53 times in five states. Do you recall what those states are? Uh, let's see, Texas, Louisiana, Michigan, Georgia, Arizona, I'm sorry, six states, in California. Okay, and now you're here in New Mexico. Now I'm in New Mexico. Um, I would ask the court to recognize uh, Mr. Hawks as an expert in cell phone records and device analysis. No objection. All right, so you're still recognized. Now you get to add New Mexico to your list. Um, Mr. Hawks, can, can you explain to the jury uh, kind of what, what kind of technology uh, you're using and, and kind of how, how the cell phone records interface with uh, the software, the extraction software? Uh, sure, so our smartphones are essentially a bunch of databases that are stored. So programs like Cellbrite go in and they extract the information from the handset. And they do it in a way that doesn't change the nature of the artifact. So if I receive a text message but don't read it, uh, it doesn't change that unread status. So at first, all of the information is removed from the handset, and, and then it's parsed through Physical Analyzer, is the name of the program. Uh, in Physical Analyzer, the information is essentially put back together, and it's converted to whatever time zone it needs to be converted to. In this particular case, um, what kind of work did you perform? Um, I reviewed the Celebrite extraction of Ms. Gutierrez Reed's, um, her iPhone. Is when, when you do, when an extraction is done, does everything on the phone get kind of downloaded? Unfortunately, not everything. So not all of the information is always recovered, but things like text messages, phone calls, images, uh, things like that it are downloaded from the handset. And when you took the, you, you received the raw data from the extraction that was done of Ms. Gutierrez's phone, is that right? Yes. Uh, so just to be clear, you yourself did not perform the extraction. That's correct. Uh, do you know who performed the extraction, not the person's name, but the agency? Uh, the, regional, the Regional Computer Forensics Lab. 
in, here in New Mexico. Uh, so how did, how did that data come to you? Uh, it came to me on an external hard drive. And when you received that data, uh, what did you do in order to conduct an analysis? So I opened the data in the physical analyzer program, which essentially takes the extracted data and runs it through the most current version of the program. Uh, and with that, it breaks out the data into various different categories. Okay. Uh, and what kind of categories? Uh, everything from, from cell sites that the phone might have seen, images, uh, videos, audio files, notes, text messages, iMessages, voice logs. There's a lot of, most of the data that we see on our phones is accessible to the program. And were you able to separate out information related to uh, this particular device that identifies this device? Yes. I'm going to show you what I am marking as States Exhibit 92. I do. What is that? This is the device information that was uh, captured by the Cellbrite program for the phone. Uh, how, do, how do we know that this is Hannah Gutierrez's phone? Um, well, I, I mean, I received the, abstra I received the uh, extraction of the phone. There's some information on here, such as like the phone number, an email address, things like that, that would suggest that it is. Okay. Uh, the phone number's on there? Yes. Right. Permission to publish? Yes. Let's just kind of look at a, at, at a couple of things here. I know it's See if we can make it a little closer up. Um, does this tell you what you, kind of? You want to use the microphone? Just go oh, I'm sorry. Does this tell you what kind of phone it was? It does. What kind of phone was it? Uh, so on number six, you can see where it says uh, detected model. It says iPhone, and then in parentheses it says D is and David, fifty four P is and Paul, A is and Adam, P is and Paul. That's the um, iPhone code for an iPhone 12 Pro Max. Okay, and I'm sorry, does this monitor usually come on? Because I can't see, I, I can send it. that would be great if, if I can see it on the monitor in front of me so I don't have to walk back and forth. My eyesight isn't good enough to see what's up there. Thank you, sir. Uh, does it provide the date and time of the extraction? Um, the date and time of the extraction is actually on on a different a different part of the extraction. What's the what What's in the number two column? That is the or date. Row, rather. I'm sorry. That is the um, that's the date and time that the phone was displaying at the time of when it was extracted in UTC. Okay. Uh, so. What is your understanding about uh, the date? I don't particularly care about the time. The date of the extraction. Th that it was, the extraction occurred on December 8th of 2021. And 
Is there an Apple ID associated with this phone? There is. What's that? So that is number 22 under Apple ID where it says hannahmemail at gmail.com. And is, what is the phone number associated with this phone? The phone number is in on line number 24, which is 928-444-3555. What's the owner name of this phone? Um, the, the name that would appear on, say, a Bluetooth device is found on line uh, 32 which is uh, Gorilla Grip Pussy Pal. Okay. And did you, um, at my request, did you separate out uh, some contact information for one of the people in the contacts of this phone? Yes. I'm going to show you what I'm marking as States Exhibit 93. May I approach? <coughs> Sir, do you recognize States Exhibit 93? I do. Uh, what is that? This is the, the uh, contact information for a contact stored as Dad Kula. Thank you. I'm sorry, I'm already publishing. Okay. Any objection? No objection. To, to the admission and publication. Generally speaking, what information does this sheet have uh, with regard to the contact Dadkula? And if you could spell that for us. Uh, sure. It's D-A-D-C-U-L-A exclamation point. Uh, so what it has is information about that person's contact info, their WhatsApp phone number, their telephone number, uh, when it was added as a contact, that sort of thing. What's the phone number for Dad Kula? Uh, the phone number is 323-365-2189. All right, thank you. At my request, did you sort of pull out uh, text messages on from the date of October 20th, 2021? I did. I'm going to show you what I'm marking as States Exhibit 94. And there are three pages to this exhibit. Do you recognize that? I do. What are we looking at there? We are looking at a text thread between the um, 928 number I already referenced and a 505 number. Okay. All right, so you'll uh, motion it in. Permission to publish. And, and of course, move. Uh, I'll, I'll move for the admission of. Um, 
93, and 94, and then I think we're also going to do a general moving like we discussed. Okay. Uh, so, no objection. Judge. All right. So you may publish. Um, when we're so when we're seeing this text message here that's on the screen, is who is this a is this a text message from that phone or to that phone? It is a text message from the nine two eight number to the five zero five number. Okay, and can you read it for us? The content. Yes. Yes, it's uh, LOL. I don't need that tonight, anyways. Right on. I might go smoke in the jacuzzi soon. But maybe not. I'm so pooped. Okay. And I'm going to show you the second page of Exhibit 94. And is that a text to or from Ms. Gutierrez's phone? It is from her phone. And it is to the 505 number? Correct. And if you can, and what's, what's the date? Uh, the date is October 20th, 2021 at 7.48 and 46 seconds uh, p.m. local time. Okay. And uh, can you read that for us? It says, headed down to get high out back, colon B. Okay. I'm going to show you the third page of Exhibit 94. And what's in the blue? Uh, so the blue is an incoming message from that 505 number to her phone. And just for context, what, what does that message say? Uh, that message says, time to eat now, how the blaze says go. And then is there a, res and what time, what time was that message sent? Uh, so that message was received by the phone at 8.24 and 46 seconds p.m. in red at 8.25 and 47 seconds. Okay. Uh, and so what your, this is the time that it was received? Correct. And this is the time it was read? Correct. And uh, then is, is there a response to that text that we're looking at here in green? There is. And, and, and uh, what time is that sent? Uh, that is sent at 8 25 and 53 seconds. And this is from Ms. Gutierrez's phone to the 505 number? Yes. And, and what, is, what does that text message say? It says, I'm still smoking. Okay, thank you. Uh, did you sort of separate out for me uh, a short thread uh, between Ms. Gutierrez's phone and the Dad Kula contact. Yes. I'm going to show you what I'm marking as States Exhibit 95. States Exhibit 95 is a two-page exhibit. May I approach? Yes. Mr. Hawks, do you recognize that? I do. What is that? Uh, these are messages that were exchanged between the 928 number and the Dad Kula contact on November 8th of 2021. Approximately what time? Uh, it starts at 408 and 36 seconds and it ends at 536. I'm sorry, 524 uh, and 38 seconds. States Exhibit 95 and ask permission to publish. No objection. All right, States 95 is admi uh, admitted. You may publish. It. 
And that message, is that from the 928 number? Correct. So any of the messages that are in green are from the 928 number, and any messages in blue are from an outside number. Okay. And can everybody read that? That way I don't have to have Mr. Hawks read it. Um, and then uh, I'm going to show you the second page, if everybody's had a moment to read that. I'll show you the second page. Um, and in the second page, what are we looking at here? Uh, so the, the top blue box is the response from the previous message that says, will do. Uh, and then beneath that is an image that was sent to her phone from the outside number. What are we looking at there? Uh, we're looking at a thumbnail of the image that was sent to her phone. So the image name is img underscore 0686.heic, and we're looking at the inset thumbnail. And were you able to collect that actual photo for me so we don't have to look at a thumbnail? Yes. Thank you. And we'll get there in a minute. At my request, did you separate a text thread between Ms. Gutierrez, the Dad Kula contact, and a contact by the name of Jason Bowles? Yes. And Mr. Hawks, do you recognize that? I do. And what is that? This is part of the text message thread that you were just referencing. And what's the date of that text exchange? Uh, what is in front of me here starts on December 1st, 2021 and ends also December 1st, 2021. and permission to publish. No objections. State 96 is admitted. You may publish. Can you just briefly explain what we're looking at here? Uh, sure. So the top blue box is a message from the Dadkula contact to Ms. Gutierrez's phone. And the second blue box is an incoming message from Mr. Bowles 
number to Ms. Gutierrez's phone. So were the, was this a... Your Honor, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. we approach just a moment? Oh, sure. Uh, Mr. Hawks, let, let me back up for just a moment. <clears throat> How do we know that three people were involved in this uh, text conversation? So the Cellbrite program will pull out text threads. So if, if um, you and I have a text thread and you and I and another person have a text thread, those are two separate threads in my phone. So what we're looking at here is a thread that was between these three people. Okay, um, this is not a thread that was only between Ms. Gutierrez and Mr. Bowles. Correct. Okay, thank you. Has everybody had an opportunity to read that? I'm gonna show you the second page of State's Exhibit 96. <laughs> And Mr. Hawks, can you tell me what we're looking at here? Yeah, we're, we're looking at a continuation of that same text thread. So the top blue box is an incoming message from the contact from Mr. Bowles. Uh, the green box beneath that is an outgoing message to both because it's a group thread. Uh, and then the bottom blue box is an incoming message from the DADQA contact. Okay. Everybody have an opportunity to read those? I know they're pretty short, and at this point they may not make much sense. But we're getting there. I'm going to show you the... One of the three of students see. Oh. I'm going to show you page three.
Okay, jury, we're going to break for lunch. Please don't talk among yourselves or anyone else about the evidence received here in court, okay? And um, thank you. We'll be back at, uh, what, what do you all want, uh, 1240 or what, 12, 1 o'clock? What do you want? Uh, is 1 o'clock You're sure it is. Okay, 1 o'clock, okay? All right. All rise. Okay, and um, counsel, because he's uh, still under oath and still testifying, please don't talk up with any other witnesses about this case. Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right. Mr. All right, so counsel will be back at 10 of, and um, just in case there's anything to address. Okay, yes, thank you. Um, so, oops. All right, is that better? Um, I'm going to, we're going to go back through real quick. Uh, some of those text threads that we had on the Elmo, and we're going to have you read the content, okay? Yes. So I'm going to place uh, on the Elmo what was previously entered into evidence as State's Exhibit 96. Can you go ahead and, and just uh, read that and, and remind us uh, if this is a message that was sent by the phone or received by the phone? Uh, sure. So this was a message that was received by Ms. Gutierrez-Reed's phone from the Dad Kila contact that says, get someone to show her a single action gun and how it works. They don't go off by themselves. And then beneath that is an incoming message from Mr. Bowles phone to Ms. Gutierrez Reed's phone that says, yes, I sent her this manual I got today also. What's the problem? Do you want me to just read them? Just read them. read it, uh, explain to the jurors what you're reading, given that they've already saw it. Yeah, so this is, e sorry, this is Exhibit 96. Uh, the first page I've already, uh, I've just read. The second page. And Mr. Hawks, what's the date of these conversations? Sorry, this is uh, December 1st, 2021. Uh, the second page starts with a message from Mr. Bowles to Ms. Reed that says, I think I sent this with an attachment. Uh, beneath that is an outgoing message from Miss Reed that says, yeah, honestly, that gun won't go off unless he fully cocked it. And then the final message on that page is a message from the dad Kila contact that said, if someone could just show her, she could see a transfer makes no difference. The final page starts with an outgoing message from Ms. Reed that says, yeah, we got some that just aren't long barreled. They are the same thing. And then finally, a uh, message from the dad Kila contact that says exactly. May I approach? I'm gonna hand you what's been marked as State's Exhibit 95. And would you go ahead and do the same thing with 95? Certainly, so 95 is from November 8th of 2021. And the first message is an outgoing message from Ms. Reed that says, hey, I need you to check out my boxes and send me some pictures of our boxes of dummies. Uh, the second page starts with an incoming text from the dad Kila contact that says, will do. And then beneath that is another incoming text message with a photograph. And at my request, did you 
separate that photograph? Did you isolate that photograph for me? Yes. All right. I'm going to show you what's been previously entered into evidence as States Exhibit 69, and we're going to do this the quick and old-fashioned way. Can you see that? Yes. Sorry for the dirty screen. Um, what, what is that? That is the image that was sent via text message, via iMessage, to Ms. Reed's phone from the dad killer contact. Thank you, sir. May I approach? Mm -hmm. Mr. Hawks, in addition to uh, uh, doing some work on Ms. Gutierrez's cell phone extraction, did you also do some work uh, on cell phone extractions from some other folks involved in this case? Yes. Okay. Uh, do you remember their names? Uh, there is a woman named Sarah. I don't remember her last name. Okay. And um, a gentleman whose name I don't remember. But okay. I'm sure I would if you refresh my memory. Well, I'm going to leave that to uh, defense counsel, and I will pass the witness. Thank you. Mr. Bullion. Thank you, Judge. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Uh, you mentioned you did some other extractions. Uh, does the word Dave Halls ring a bell? Yes. All right. Is that the other phone that you looked at? Correct. All right. And Judge, if I can publish just to his screen, please. Stand here, wherever you would like. You would just walk up and show me. Um, it'll be quicker to do it this way because then I can publish it if the judge uh, admits it. Okay. Here, why don't I just stand here yeah. and I'll look over your shoulder? That's perfect. Sorry. Yeah, that that works. Sir, what are you looking at? Uh, uh, we just <clears throat> what's on that screen and what's on your screen is different. I'm showing you. I don't mind. No, sir. All right. What are you looking at here, sir? I'm looking at the first page of a PDF of a Celebrite report um, that was done by the New Mexico RCFL. All right. Of the phone that you just asked me about. All right. And can you scroll down to the second page? Yes. All right. So, what is this device information? What does this tell you? Uh, so this is a summary of the data that is in this PDF report. It involves chats, native messages, which are, the, I, in this case, iMessages, uh, WhatsApp, emails, timeline, and then data files, which include uh, images and videos. Okay. Is there information about deleted uh, information on this device? There is. Can you tell us about that, please? So the, uh, the report indicates that there's one deleted iMessage and one deleted WhatsApp. Uh, in addition to that, there are five deleted emails and there are some deleted images, but without knowing what the images are, I don't know if they're things that he actually deleted or if they were cached images that got purged. And how many images are notated on the report as being deleted? I'm sorry. I didn't bring my yeah, help, help yourself. Sorry. Yeah. Um, 
So there's 152,237 images total, and there's 1,438 that are deleted. You can just hold on to that. And then uh, 3,214 videos with seven deleted. Okay. And when you're looking at a device and you see that something's been deleted, what, is, what does that actually mean? What is that telling you? It means that it was deleted and recovered. So if I delete something from my cell phone and, the, and it's overwritten or that memory is actually purged, then it's not recovered and there's just no evidence of it. So this shows that there were items that were deleted and recovered by the program. All right, and you have no way of knowing if additional things were deleted because it just wouldn't, wouldn't be extracted. You wouldn't have the information to look at. Correct. All right, and in your experience, do you know that that sometimes happens? Um, I, I know that it can happen. I mean, if it's not there, I don't know that it was there to begin with and was deleted. Uh, but it certainly it certainly can happen. Okay. Uh, actually, I'll just leave this here with you. So if you can go to the emails page on that document. Let me make sure you've got the right one. Yeah, I do. Um, all right. How, there's about 20 emails uh, in Mr. Hall's extraction here. How do you know that these are actually his emails? Um, this well, so there's incoming emails. The the top one is an incoming email. Um, it's just to avoid what we had earlier. It's to a Gmail address. Mm -hmm. uh, so that means that that account was installed on the phone, and this is an email that was received by his phone, signed into an email address associated with him. Okay, so that physical phone has access to that email address. Yes. Okay. Um, Judge, I would move to conditionally uh, admit defendant's exhibit. Oh.
And so you had mentioned uh, emails being deleted. Can you say with certainty that emails were deleted from Mr. Hollis's phone? We'll celebrate recovered deleted information. So yeah, so it was recovered from a deleted, it's a recovered deleted email. Okay. And the email that, actually we'll look over that, apologies. If I could approach again. <clears throat> Sir, I'm handing you uh, what I've marked as Defendant's Exhibit P. Uh, can you look at the first two pages of that document, please? Yes. All right. What, what is that? This is an iPhone 11. Is it Sarah Zachary's phone? I'm looking for the uh, for the device name. Council approach. And I may just be able to stipulate. Well, no, I need mean, you. Mm -hmm. okay. Uh, the state will stipulate that what Mr. Hawks is looking at is a cell phone extraction of the witness, Sarah Zachary. Thank you. Judge, may I retrieve my... Yes. Yeah. Thanks. All right, sir, with both Mr. Hall's phone and Sarah Zachary's phone, are the dates and timestamps listed in the extraction uh, for text messages, messages and emails, are those accurate? Yes. And how do you know that? Uh, so everything in, everything in our phones in these SQLite databases is stored in UTC by default. What Cellbrite does is it converts it to whatever time zone we want it converted to, in this case, Mountain Time. Okay, so the foundational testimony you gave at length regarding my client's phone would apply with equal force to both Mr. Halls's phone and Ms. Zachary's phone? Yes, these are things that are written at the time. Okay. Uh, did you have any other uh, role in this case? Did you do any other work in this case? No, my primary role was to help the prosecutor uh, sort of sift through various pictures and, and that sort of thing to make sure only images that were native to the phone came in, not cached images or things okay. that were beyond her control. You mentioned uh, on direct exam that there are some things that you don't get in a extraction. Uh, would one of those things be 
of something stored on a cloud, like an iCloud? Uh, it depends. Are you referring to a document or an image? Uh, why don't you describe both? So if we have things on our iCloud, typically it can be stored also locally on the phone and on the iCloud, or uh, in the case of photographs, your phone may keep a little thumbnail that is a link to your iCloud account. So in that case, the original photo would not be on the handset. It would be on the cloud, but that thumbnail is essentially a gateway to the original image. Okay. Is If something is just on the cloud and you don't have a, a gateway, as you described, is there a way to actually go get that information? You could get it with a search warrant. Okay. Uh, did you discuss doing any kind of search warrant to retrieve uh, images or texts or video uh, from Sarah Zachary that she may have in the cloud? No. No? Uh, do you recall having a email discussion on October 12th, 2023 with uh, Ms. Morrissey about this subject? I don't. I know that Ms. Morrissey, if, if you're telling me I had one with her, then um, perhaps I did. I sent her some various subpoena language. I don't remember this um, iCloud being part of it, but if you're telling me it was there, then, then I did. Would, would looking at the email refresh your recollection? Yes. That could approach? Yes. Can I see it? Sure. So you, you've seen it. Okay. Yeah. See it. See it. Thank you. Let me I see you want me to read all of it, correct? Uh, just the top one. Oh, um, I'm sorry. If it's refresh your recollection, let me know. And if not, you know, let me know. Uh, yeah, so this is what I was referring to as, as far as. Um, so you're going to give that back to him and he's going to ask uh, if yeah. this refreshes your memory to the question he asked you. Yeah, did that uh, refresh your memory, sir? Um, what I think I meant by that, and, and I'm not really sure, so I don't. I can't say with 100% certainty if I was referring to, I'm, I'm sorry, you have a, a question beyond that or it refreshes my recollection of the conversation, yes. Okay, so on Ms. Zachary's phone, uh, you were requested to get tax videos and photos from September 15th, 2021 to November 21st, 2021. And you indicated that there were some photos that were not on her phone but might be on her iCloud account. Did you have further discussion about how you might go obtain those photos? No, I think what, what we're, we're referring to the same thing. I, I believe my recollection is, is that I'm referring to the thumbnails. So uh, if I were to download a thumbnail from a phone and you were to put it onto a television screen, it just gets blurry as opposed to the actual full-size image. That's my recollection of the full size image may be on the iCloud. Okay. And you, you said in here that there are no entries on the phone or image metadata, right? Correct. All right. Uh, I don't have anything else. Thank you. Thank you. 
redirect. Just real quick, Mr. Hawks. Um, is it possible for a person's phone to delete things without the operator of the phone intending for that to happen? What do you mean specifically? It, and I, I, it, I thought there was a discussion earlier when we were off the record um, that sometimes the phone automatically deletes certain things. That's what I'm referring to. So you're referring to cached images. Right. So when, when we go to a website or social media, our phone will capture a series of images. And those images go into what's called a cache folder. And after a certain amount of time, that cache folder automatically will delete. Uh, but that's not from the person's camera roll. And it wouldn't be from their email either? Uh, email and, contents? Oh, mean? I'm, yeah, I'm speaking about what Mr. Bullion was referencing with regard to Mr. Halls's uh, deleted data. Not to my knowledge. It, okay. It wouldn't, no. Okay, I just wanted to square that up. Thank you. I don't have anything further. Appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. Next witness. And just for the record, I'm going to reserve just in case okay. we need to bring him back. You're reserved. Don't talk to any witnesses. Yes, ma'am. 